Hey, this is Jen, and you really do love science. You just don't know it yet. How are you doing on your metric prefixes? I know you know these from middle school, but how are you really doing, and are you really comfortable with your metric prefixes? Let's review a couple of them, okay? We're talking about prefixes like kilo and centi and milli, and these are the three main ones that most teachers want you to have memorized. How are you doing on, for example, the kilogram or the kilometer? A kilogram is 2.2 pounds, and so if you can picture something that weighs about 2 pounds, that's, that's a kilogram, and I want you to be able to picture these things in your mind, like how heavy a kilogram is, and not just memorize what it means on paper. And then what about a kilometer or a kilometer? How comfortable are you with a kilometer? Well, a kilometer is about a half mile. It's like 0.6 miles, if I remember correctly. And so if you run a 26K um, marathon, like a 26-kilometer marathon, that's a lot shorter than running 26 miles. What about a centimeter? You're supposed to be really comfortable with a centimeter. A centimeter is about as wide as you know wide ruled paper that notebook paper you had or you still use well the wide ruled paper the thickness of those lines is about a centimeter so it's kind of about as wide as this depending on your screen on your uh, computer screen so a centimeter if you picture also most people's pinky like the fingernail on your pinky is about a centimeter wide and so I want you to be comfortable with the centimeter and the kilometer and the kilogram. By the way, in physics, whenever you talk about mass, you will always be using kilograms in physics instead of using grams. For some reason in chemistry, they tend to use grams, and in physics, they use kilograms, which is the standard unit. The system, the international system of units decided on the kilogram as the standard unit for mass. And then what about a millimeter? A millimeter is really, really tiny. It's sort of like a dot on the paper, like like the thickness of a period on at the end of a sentence. So a millimeter is really, really tiny. And now that you can picture them, see, first I want you to be able to picture how big they are, because then when you memorize how many go into it, like how many millimeters go into a meter, you, you won't get it backwards. If you know a millimeter is tiny, then you'll know that a thousand millimeters fit into one meter stick. And I hope you know a meter stick, you've seen them before, they're very much like a yardstick, just a little bit longer than a yardstick, but approximately a yardstick. Now notice that the millimeter is the small unit out of the millimeter and the meter. This is the smaller unit because the millimeter is tiny and compared to the millimeter, the meter is the bigger unit. And notice that the bigger unit out of these two numbers, the bigger unit gets the smaller number, and the smaller unit gets the big number. That's always the way it works. I'll show you another example. Let's switch colors, shall we? OK, a centimeter is about this long. It's about as wide as the pinky on your hand. Okay, so if a centimeter is about that wide, would it be a hundred meters that fit in a centimeter or a hundred centimeters that fit in a meter? Well, you got it right. It's a hundred of these short guys that fit into one meter. So notice that this is the shorter or the smaller unit and notice that it got the bigger number. Whenever you have an equality and you're, you're trying to figure out, oh, how many centimeters fit in a meter? And you're trying to decide, you're like, oh, centimeter, I know the number's 100, but I can't figure out if it's 100 centimeters in one meter or 100 meters in a centimeter. Just remember that the smaller unit gets the bigger number and the bigger unit gets the smaller number. Also with centimeter, I want you to remember the easy, easy way to remember this is 100 cents fit into $1, right? And so therefore, if you just remember 100 cents fit into a dollar, 
it's going to be 100, like let's do centigrams equals 1 gram. 100 centimeters equals 1 meter. 100 centiliters equals 1 liter. See how easy it is? And so the prefix cent, or centi, means 1 over a hundredth, just like a cent is 1 one hundredth of a dollar. So let's turn this around just a second. I want you to be able to write it both ways. Isn't it true that 1 cent is 0.01 dollars? And so just like that, 1 centimeter is 0.01 meters. You see how both of these expressions are exactly the same thing? But I want you to be comfortable with both expressions. So let's practice a little bit more. Kilo means a thousand. So it's a big unit. It's bigger than the gram. Therefore, it gets the small number. And we're going to have the base unit, which in this case is the smaller unit. Not always, but in this case, it's the smaller unit. So it's going to get the bigger number. So a kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. How could we reverse that? What if I asked you one gram and I want to know how many kilograms fit into one gram? The answer would be one one thousandth or 0 0.001 kilograms is equal to one gram. Notice that both of these expressions are the same. Milli means one over a thousand or 0 0.001. Milli is a very small unit. Remember, a millimeter is tiny, tiny like that. It's basically very small. A thousand millimeters fit into one meter stick, but let's see if we can reverse it. If I asked you one millimeter, well, how many meters fit into one millimeter? That's a weird way of saying it because not even one meter fits into a millimeter. So it's a fraction. So you could say 0 0.001 meters is equal to one millimeter. Just like 100 cents equals one dollar or one cent equals 0 0.01 dollar. You see how they really, really mean the same thing. So let's try to think of some familiar objects to help us get even more comfortable with these units. A kilogram is sort of like the mass of, hmm, a large, a really large heavy potato. It's 2.2 pounds. So just picture a pretty large heavy potato. I'm trying to think of something else that is about as heavy as 2.2 pounds, but I think you can picture 2.2 pounds like it's that lightest weight when you're at the gym, the tiniest little weight that actually I do use a two pound weight when I'm doing little arm exercises. And so that's a kilogram, 2.2 pounds. I want you to be comfortable with that just so that you recognize it. A milligram is really tiny and it's the mass of, I don't know, let's think of something really small like a sesame seed. So a milligram could be the mass of a sesame seed. Very small mass. Um, it's a thousandth of a gram. What about a gram? A gram is sort of like the mass of a paper clip. So you can sort of get a feeling for how heavy a gram would be. And then we have a lot of other prefixes. We've got prefixes like mega, like megabytes on your computer. And mega means a million. And you can remember that because of mega millions jackpot, which is the same as saying 10 to the sixth. And so a mega liter, for example, is 10 to the sixth liters or a million liters. And you could also say that one liter is equal to 10 to the minus sixth megaliters, the abbreviation for mega is capital M, or you could say one over a million megaliters equals one liter. We also have this other prefix called micro, and micro has this special abbreviation. It looks like a U with a tail on the front, and I drew an extra long tail just to exaggerate it. But micro actually means one over a million. So it's the opposite of mega or the inverse of mega. And so 
there are a million micrograms, for example, in one gram. The microgram, think of a microscope, the microgram is tiny. It's so tiny that you'd probably need a microscope to see something that weighed a microgram. And so because it's tiny, notice that it gets the big number with the small unit and relatively speaking the small number goes with the big unit. And the abbreviation for microgram you would use this Greek letter mu which is the Greek M and we're going to use that as the abbreviation in front of the abbreviation for gram. So one microgram again equals one over a million grams or 10 to the minus 6 grams. And your teacher will also want you to know these prefixes. Milli of course means 1 over a thousand or 0 0.001. Centi means 1 one hundredth or 0 0.01. Deci means 1 over 10 or 0 0.1. Deca means 10, hecto means 100, and kilo means 1,000. So let's see if we can practice a little bit. Can you fill in these blanks? And there's actually, there are actually two ways to fill in these blanks. Pause the video for a second if you can and see if you can fill in the blanks. Let's say one meter is how many hectometers? Well, hecto, we look down here and we see hecto is a hundred. Hmm, so that's a big unit, meaning it's greater than one, and so the big unit gets the smaller number. So we're going to say 0 0.01 hectometers equals one meter. The hecto unit was big, so it got the smaller number. You could also say one hectometer equals a hundred meters. That would also be true. Let's try the next one, decigrams and grams. Well, we look down here and we see deci is one over 10. So this is a small unit. And because it's a small unit, it's gonna get the bigger number. So I'm gonna say 10 decigrams is equal to one gram. Or you could say one decigram is equal to point Oh, one grams. Let's do milliliters and liters. Well, I look down here, I say, well, milli is one over a thousand, so that is a small unit. And I remember that a millimeter is tiny and a milligram is tiny, like a sesame seed. And so if it's a small unit, it's going to get the bigger number. So the thousand goes on this side and the one goes on that side. Or, if you want to say one milliliter, you could say 0 0.001 liters. Notice that the small unit still gets the bigger number because 0 0.001 is a smaller number and the liter is a bigger unit. Okay, and now comes the embarrassing part. I have three songs to sing for you, and yes, I wrote these lyrics just to help you remember your metric prefixes. So here is a song for you. Are you ready? Milly, 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 so silly, silly, silly in the morning. A millimeter's tiny fit a thousand on your hiney in the morning. A thousand millimeters in a meter stick. A liter's got a thousand mils, so don't you get tricked. Milly, 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 oh so silly, silly, silly in the morning. Very silly, isn't it? That's just the first of three songs, so it gets even sillier. Okay, so now let's go for song number two. We're going to practice the concept of kilo, like kilogram. You ready? This is a song to the tune of Gilligan's Island. I'm not sure if you've ever watched Gilligan's Island, but when I was a kid, we watched it a lot. So, if you want to buy a kilogram of silver or of drugs, you're getting away with a thousand grams. Look out, you might get mugged. Look out, you might get mugged. 
a kilometer is really long. The end is out of sight. One thousand meters is one km, and now you'll get it right. And now you'll get it right. All right, now we're on our third and final song, and this song is about Senti. This one is super, super corny, so you're going to have to forgive me, but this is sort of, kind of, to the tune of Old Lang Syne, even though I'm saying that wrong. Old Lang Syne, however you say it. Okay, you ready? It's very hard to sing. Oh, send to gram, oh, send to gram, point oh, one of a gram. A centimeter is as wide as the pinky on your hand. One hundred centimeters all lined up in a row. Fit nicely on a meter stick and now you'll always know. Yay! <laughs> Those are my three silly, silly, silly songs. And if you memorize the lyrics, maybe it will help you with your test when you have to memorize your metric prefixes. <laughs>